Hi, hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we're going to be looking at mechanism wheels and how they work, because I found this RC car at a local shop for basically next to nothing, and the way that they have set this up and kind of cheated to make the whole system cheap enough to mass produce and put out in a toy shop, uh, means that you can actually kind of work out how mechanism wheels work fairly easily. So the big things to know about this car before we really get into this is that it only has a few directions of movement. It can travel left and right, as you would expect with mechanism. It can do forwards and backwards, and it can do the diagonals, but it cannot do tank steer turning, which you would normally see on combat robots and a lot of other robots, which is where you have both sides going in different directions to turn in one way or the other. This is because this robot is set up, or this RC car is set up so that the caddy corner wheels are actually tied together. They use the same gear train. So there is one motor that does back right and front left and vice versa. So you can, as you can see, you've got only two motors in here, but even with those two motors, you are still able to get that full range of movement I talked about. You're just not able to do the tank steer turning. So, why is this and how does mechanism work and why does this particular setup of motors and gearboxes and stuff help with all of that? To answer this question, we are going back to our old friend physics and force vector diagrams, which we've done a couple of times on this channel before because they are quite helpful. So, this here is a top-down view of a wheel. We're gonna imagine that we're not using a mechanism wheel for the moment, we're just looking at a regular old wheel. So if the regular old wheel is turning down at the front and up at the back, it is pushing backwards on the ground, the ground is pushing forwards on the wheel and the whole robot, and the net force is in this direction. That is how the wheel turns to push a robot or a platform forwards in a particular direction. Now, with the mechanism wheels, as you can see, we've got these rollers here, which sit at a 45 degree angle to the direction of travel, something like this in here. Now, what's interesting about these rollers is, of course, they are a roller. So in one direction, no force can be transmitted through into the vehicle. And in the other direction, force can be transmitted through into the vehicle. So rather than looking at this force that we've produced from the angle of the actual wheel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our sit up 45 degrees and we're going to look at it from the direction of the roller. So you can see here that now, looking at things from the roller's perspective, the force is going off that way in a 45 degree arc, which means what we can actually do is we can take that and we can turn that into two vectors. So we've got some level of force going this way in the direction of the roller, and then we've got some level of force going this way against the direction of the roller. Now, as mentioned before, any force that is in the direction of the roller does literally nothing to the actual robot or the platform, whatever it is you're trying to move. It's only force in the other direction which actually forces the robot or the platform to move. So this roller cancels out all of this force. So our actual net force from trying to turn the wheel this way is some way in that direction perpendicular to the, oh sorry, parallel with the line of the roller. So, if we have a look at our car here, this is a little bit interesting because what actually happens is you can see this roller here is pointing in this direction across that way, but where it contacts the ground on the other side, I've had to flip this so it's actually, when it's in underneath the robot, rather than pointing that way, it's actually pointing this way in under here. So if we do rotate this wheel in this direction, we get a force going in that direction. And so we've got this wheel and that wheel turning at the same time. So if we spin just these two wheels, what we get is two lots of force going in that direction and the rollers in under here are rolling in that direction, allowing the whole robot to move in diagonal. Just like that. So that solves the diagonals, which is fairly easy to solve when you think about it, because literally all we're talking about is doing one wheel set at a time. 
But what happens now if we want to do forwards and backwards? Because as you can probably see, driving one wheel forwards doesn't actually get the robot to go forwards. In this particular instance, driving these two wheels forwards forces the robot off at an angle. So what ends up happening here is, as mentioned, we've got some diagonal force from this wheel and also from this wheel calculated in exactly the same way. And then we've got force from both of these wheels, but because of the direction of these uh, rollers, we actually get the force in the opposite direction. Now I'm drawing these very badly, but they should all be lined up at 45 degrees to the actual direction that the robot wants to head. So what ends up happening is again, we do force vector diagrams. And in this case, what we'll find is that there is a proponent of force going in, sorry, in that direction, a proponent of force going in that direction, a proponent of force going in this direction, a proponent of force going in that direction, and then a small amount of, well, some force, half that force going this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. So in this particular instance, all of the reds cancel out because they should be equal and opposite. So we lose all of these because they just cancel each other out. And what we're left with is four amounts of force going forwards. And if we then reverse the direction of the motors, we would go backwards. So critically, there's a couple of things to take away from this. One, you absolutely need the motors, uh, the wheels set up exactly this way so that the direction of these rollers makes an X across the platform because otherwise this whole system doesn't work. And two, you need all four wheels driving at the same time to be able to go forwards and be able to go backwards, which is a little bit contradictory in some ways because, or should, feels like it shouldn't work because of course, driving forwards and backwards on regular wheels is the easiest possible thing to do. Whereas in mechanism wheels, you have to have the full setup of four wheels and you have to make sure that they're going at the same speed and applying the same amount of force because otherwise you're going to unbalance those red forces that we had and you'll actually get the robot maybe turning or drifting as it's going forwards. You'll kind of get a, yeah, like an angle on your drive instead of a straight forwards or a straight backwards. But now let's take a look at how side to side works. And surprisingly enough, or unsurprisingly, it is basically the same mechanism as driving forwards and backwards, except for this time, rather than having all the wheels turning in the same direction, we're going to turn one set of wheels backwards and the other set of wheels forwards. So that ends up looking something like this. So we've got one set of wheels going forwards to give us a direction, an angled direction over that way, and the other set of wheels going this way to give us an angled direction, or going backwards to give us an angled direction this way. And again, we just do our force diagrams on these, and we've got some level of force going this way, 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 and then of course we also have our other set of force, which is going down in this case, up in this case, down in this case, up in this case. So again, if you actually did all of these angles and maths correctly and weren't just roughing them on a whiteboard, all of the up and down forces, the forwards and backwards forces would cancel each other out. So you'd cancel this with that and that with that. And what you end up with is you actually lose the blue because it's not giving all that force anymore. All you've got is the red force, which gives us that leftwards motion. And if you did the inverse of that and did these motors going the other way and those motors going the other way, you would get the opposite effect. So there you go. That is how those mechanism wheels work. It is again, all about these kind of adding and subtracting of forces and allowing things to roll and move in different weird and wonderful ways. So, the other thing that can happen with this is of course, you can then add more mixing into this. So not with this particular vehicle, because of course uh, it is locked together, but you could add some level, if you have all four running, of tank steering into the mix as well. So you can drive forwards and tank steer as you normally would, but you'll also get like drifting diagonals and going forwards and changing angles and all of that kind of stuff by adding different levels of mixing in here. So there you go. I hope that helps out here and kind of makes some level of sense. And as you can see, if I actually drag this robot side to side, 
you can see that those wheels actually roll against each other, kind of confirming our maths and our theory here, just showing that those actually do the things that we're expecting. And if we forwards and backwards, they just roll forwards and backwards exactly as we expect. And if we try and go in a diagonal, we get one set of wheels going like that. And if we do the other diagonal, we get the other set of wheels going. Perfect. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. If you've got anything else kind of robot -y that you're interested in that you don't quite understand how it works and you'd like me to do a video like this on and just kind of outline some of the basics on it, please let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all in the next video.